What is up guys, this is Mr. Ninja Boy and today we're going to be continuing the Photoshop tutorial series, taking off where we left off last time as we went through many of the essentials and basics you must learn before continuing on to more advanced techniques which we will be getting into today. If you haven't watched the first video in this series which covers all the basics as I mentioned, I highly recommend that you watch that video first which can be found on my channel under the Photoshop tutorial series playlist and also in a link I provide in the description below. This has been a very highly requested video and series that I continue after the amazing support I received upon releasing the first tutorial, so I am here today to continue this with part 2 covering pretty cool stuff, which includes powerful tools um, which we are going to be learning, some awesome stuff like making objects from photos disappear, and more that we will dive into later, and also we're going to be um, covering layer masks, lighting effects, filters, and um, yeah, that's going to be basically what we will be um, covering and all the elements in this tutorial today in this second tutorial on the Photoshop tutorial series. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so we're going to get started with this tutorial by learning how to utilize a lot of the very powerful tools that are included in Photoshop that will really come in handy um, when doing photo manipulation, photo editing, stuff of that nature. So we're going to get started by learning a skill that uh, basically includes removing an object uh, from an image and basically sampling parts of uh, the background of an image and painting over it to have the illusion of it being removed from the image itself. In this case, we're going to be removing the Eiffel Tower from this image of the Eiffel Tower. And if you guys want to edit the exact same photo we're going to be using and all the photos that we're going to be using in this tutorial, um, in this video, if you want to follow along, um, there will be a link in the description below with a download to basically a resource package I made for you guys with all the images and other resources we're going to be using like the lighting effects and whatnot in this video. Alright, so uh, we're going to get started by actually making a selection of this tower um, so we don't really mess with anything else in the background and we just focus on this, removing this and this, this basically applies to anything else um, if you want to be removing from an image itself. So uh, basically what we're doing is selecting the object, isolating the object that we're going to be removing. So um, let's zoom in a bit so we can get a little more precise and we can um, go over here to select the pen tool or press B for the shortcut. So we're going to be using the pen tool to actually make the selection. But before we do that, we're actually going to create a new layer by pressing that. And once we have the new layer, we can start by um, we can start making the selection. So we're going to do that by uh, starting around here as the reference point. Um, we'll make the selection of basically what we're doing is making the selection of the silhouette of the uh, Eiffel Tower. We don't really have to go too, too precise, especially here where the background is quite simple. Um, we just have like the sky and the clouds and whatnot. So we're, uh, yeah, we're just going to make the selection here. We do not have to make, um, the selection right onto the object itself, but, um, with that being said, if you are going to be doing like professional work and whatnot, where um, you know there's more detail involved, especially if, the, if if it's an image that has more details in the background, you do want to go more detailed than this. But for the tutorial's sake, um, to save time, we aren't going to go too detailed. I just want to give you guys the general idea on how to actually do this, how to achieve this effect that um, that we're trying to achieve. So. Um, uh, once we go down here, we are actually going to go a little more detailed um, where we have all these buildings and the hedges, a little more stuff going on in the background. Um, so we are going to follow like the geometry of these hedges, which is like pretty cubic. So it's quite straightforward. We don't even have to make a lot of like curvature. But um, here we do where we have this little, little like semicircle dome type of thing. Um, at the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, so we're just going to do that. Alright, so that looks about right. Now we're going to continue making this selection around these little details, this bush here, and the hedge. So once we do that, we can close off the selection um, by starting uh, by selecting the uh, reference point we started at. And uh, bam, as you guys can see, we have the Eiffel Tower fully selected. And this is basically what we're going to be messing with and um, using the background to sample to paint over this little uh, selection that we made. So uh, we're going to right click here and we are going to uh, make selection. And uh, for feather radius, uh, put it at 0 0.1 pixels, anti-alias on. And um, yeah, that looks about right. So let's just click OK. And as you guys can see, we have a little selection here. So um, we're going to get started with actually painting over this and making um, making it 
basically um, invisible to like it. We're basically going to blend it into the background, painting over it. Um, and you guys will see what I mean uh, right now. So we're going to go over here to this um, to this tool called the clone stamp tool. I'm going to click on that and uh, we're going to get started with sampling a part of the background and painting over it. We're going to start with this middle section where it's just a clear sky and we're going to uh, click alt and click on this area. Once we have that sampled, we're going to move over here and start painting over it. Now, as you guys can see, basically what it's doing is it's selecting this area and painting over this to basically uh, remove this object and um, use the background as a reference to do so. So we're going to keep on doing that sort of idea by selecting uh, uh, parts of the image and referencing it um, by clicking Alt um, to sample it um, is uh, actually the right word to use. So we're basically just sampling and um, painting over parts of the image. So there we go. And as you guys can see, that's really uh, achieving the sort of effect we're trying to get. We're going to start down here with the, it's because this is like a harder part of the image to do with all these little details. But again, this is just a tutorial, so we are not going to go too, too um, detailed with this. But we're just, we're just going to try to achieve the effect. And I'm just going to show you guys the general idea of this and how to, how to do it. So once you have the idea down, you know, how to actually... Um, um, you know, once you got the hang of this, you can really do this with any type of photo and it'll be a lot easier. So this is just basically just practicing the skill. Um, everything in this video is just basically practicing these skills. So when you do want to actually do some serious work, you, you know how to achieve, um, these effects. Now we're going to move over to the upper section. And again, we're just going to select. And if you guys want to make the brush, uh, bigger or smaller, we can uh, hold down Alt and then right, uh, hold down the right uh, mouse button and just click and drag in and out to make the size smaller or bigger as you guys desire. For the smaller little details, when you go in closer, you do want the brush to be smaller, of course, and vice versa. When you have like a bigger area like this, um, you really wouldn't mind having a bigger brush size. That wouldn't really affect anything. So here um, we are going to uh, add a little detail with the clouds by sampling um, a part of like the cloud itself and are uh, using the brush over this area. So we can sample this this kind of area and um, paint over this essentially. So it is very, this is a very simple um, skill. Uh, I mean, a very simple tool to use and a very powerful skill to have up your sleeve. Um, it's a, I would say it's a very essential thing to learn in Photoshop, very easy to use and also very powerful. So, um, we're just trying to achieve the most realistic effect we can here. And I think that does not look too bad. We can just uh, smooth this out by uh, sampling um, parts that are closer to this. And I think that does not look too bad at all. Now um, let's zoom out of the image itself to see um, what we achieved. We can click on this and oh, well, all right, let's not move the layer itself. And bam, as you guys can see, we did um, remove the Eiffel Tower itself, but you guys can see like a little outline of it, especially down here at the bottom. Here, I did not even bother to transfer over the buildings because that it, that will take a lot more time. But this is just the general idea. This is how to do it. I just am sharing you guys, um, you know, the, how to use these tools and you guys can utilize it and um, use your creative ability to really achieve um, the most realistic possible effect with this. All right. So now we're going to be going over how to use another pretty important tool um, and very easy to use, which is called the blur tool. And this is actually going to be useful here in this uh, in this case to actually uh, blend in these lines as you guys can see it, it looks pretty like choppy like you can really see the uh, the contrast the difference um, uh, as to where we actually um, faded in the uh, painted over the Eiffel Tower you can still sort of see the uh, the silhouette of the Eiffel Tower and um, we can sort of blend that in using the blur tool which is um, very simple to use as I said so the blur tool is found here it's uh, this uh, range looking icon and we're actually gonna just uh, click on that and zoom in to uh, the image uh, where we can sort of see these lines here of uh, the outline so first of all um, when we want to blend two images uh, these are two separate layers this layer this is a layer itself uh, where we actually edited the um, painted into the uh, 
the Eiffel Tower. Um, what we're going to do is actually merge these two layers and make them one image. So we're going to click on uh, the layer one, which is uh, this layer on top, and then the tower itself, the actual base image. Click on that and hold shift so you can select both. Right click and we're going to um, merge layers. So once we've merged layers, we can now use the blur, blur tool. So we go back here, click on that, and we can start uh, by um, just clicking and dragging. And as you guys can see, what it's doing is basically uh, using a type of blur, like a Gaussian blur, something like that, to essentially um, blend this in and use uh, blur in very specific areas that you select. You can do um, a, like blur in the whole image itself using filters, which we will be going over in this tutorial as well later. But for now, um, this is very uh, selective type of blur where you can really select and, um, uh, you know, specify where exactly you want um, the blur to be. So we're just going to um, blend this in using the blur, click and drag, and um, basically just uh, make this look a lot nicer. Um, by blending it in using blur. So as you guys can see, when you actually zoom into the image and start blurring, it does look a lot better. This will of course look better um, if you if you have like a lot of details to begin with, and it's very um, it, like if the if the image goes really well in the first place, you made the clouds um, all the shapes go together well. Plus, use the blur tool on top. This is really the way to do it and um, it'll look uh, that much nicer. So as you guys can see, we can even like blur the edges of these hedges, make uh, make it uh, blend into the image a lot nicer. And um, yeah, as you guys can see, uh, now uh, if we uh, zoom out back to 100%, that looks a lot, lot nicer than, um, it, than it did before. All right, so now we're gonna go over a couple more tools that are quite essential to know while using Photoshop. And the first one is called the brush tool. Now we're gonna go to the brush tool by clicking on this icon here, uh, which is a brush. And now we are in the brush tool. So essentially what I did first um, was I created a new document by going to file new and then um, under the dimensions 1920 by 1080, doesn't really matter, just make a new document and create a new layer. So once we have a new layer here, we are going to the brush tool as I, um, as I showed you guys. And uh, once we click on that, essentially what the brush tool is, it gives us the freedom to select different uh, styles of brushes and um, you know under different settings and whatnot and uh, by doing so we can we have the freedom to essentially just paint um, onto uh, like uh, this canvas um, so to speak and um, we can really do a lot with the brush tool um, let's say we can select uh, like one of the uh, the first the first one is a uh, quite simple um, brush which is uh, it's um, it's just basically a straight um, it doesn't really have any detailing like some of these brushes have a lot of like rough edges like here as you can see the first brush is quite simple and um, first and second are actually different like variations um, the second is essentially the same one as the first one with full hardness so what hardness does is if we're at zero hardness if you can see there um, on the edges you can really see a little like type of blur but if we bump up the hardness a bit let's say we go like around 50%, um, you can see a little more um, detail. It's a, it looks a lot more crisp around the edges. One more thing you guys um, might want to know uh, while using the brush tool, if you guys want to do like a straight line, you can hold down shift and um, in the direction that you want to paint in, um, you can connect lines and do like, let's say if you want a, a di diagonal straight line here, you just hold down shift and uh, click. So it, you can basically do straight lines you, if you start here and you click there and hold down shift, you can do a straight line there. So um, if you travel over here again, you can go to sizes and uh, you, you can uh, adjust the size. Obviously, it'll make the brush bigger and it, there's a lot of different variations built in uh, brushes onto Photoshop. You can also um, buy brushes, presets, install new brushes and whatnot and uh, create your own. And um, yeah, this is just a very, uh, oh, this is actually quite interesting, a leaf uh, type of brush. See, like brushes are um, are something more used in like graphic design type of, type of work, more so than photo editing. But this is a very, very nice thing to uh, know how to use. And if you have an artistic ability, if you have a, um, you know, a really um, creative side to you, I guess, um, this will really, really uh, come in handy and you'll have a lot of fun using the brush tool.
All right, so the last tool that we're going to go over in this tutorial is going to be the gradient tool. And it's the gradient tool is very useful for creating nice abstract sort of simplistic backgrounds and stuff like that. This will be useful for creating like um, graphics, like uh, if you want to create like a header, a thumbnail, stuff like that. This is going to be a very useful uh, tool to know how to use. And it's actually quite simple. So we're going to just hide this uh, this layer where we created, uh, where we just mess around with the brushes and whatnot. And I just created a new layer, so I'll just do that by just clicking on that, create a new layer. And on this layer, now we're going to go over to here and this uh, click on this, which is going to um, put us into the, uh, or we're going to be using the gradient tool by clicking on that. Um, so just click on that. And basically what the gradient tool is, we can select a preset from one of these. Let's say we want a black and white sort of gradient where like uh, we want a background with the top left um, darker, like a black fading into white. So we can click on that, press OK. And we can start by selecting here, clicking and dragging to across uh, the, uh, the image. And as you guys can see here, we created a nice gradient type of background with the black starting here and um, the white um, traveling like down here so it's like a nice fade and if we want to do it the other way we start down here and click and drag diagonally across there and as you guys can see we uh, we did the same effect but reversed now let's say we want to do a different we can use even alpha channels like uh, different gradients that have transparency to it let's say this one we can click on that start here click and drag and uh, as you guys can see we made some lines we can do we can do it on a smaller scale uh, as you guys can see if we do that now let's say we wanted to do different colors everything else they're just presets that are built in we can uh, let's say we want like an orange nice like popping background click on that and then go back to here click and drag and as you guys can see it's quite simple to do uh, gradient backgrounds you guys can just mess around with this and um, you know really try to figure out what the best uh, sort of preset and the best uh, effect that you want to achieve uh, using this you can do it up and down diagonally really it's up to you so that's the last tool that we are going over in this tutorial all right, so now we're going to be going over the concepts of using layer masks in Photoshop. Now, layer masks are a very important way to um, manage your work in Photoshop and projects because it's like an almost like a fail-proof, non-destructive way of doing things. And you'll you'll get exactly what I mean when we dive deep into this. So um, basically, what I did here was the sort of abstract type of design that I had in mind. For um, like sort of like a poster for this uh, for this wallpaper of this car, and um, it's just a very simple thing I just did quickly with brushes and and whatnot. But it's just to showcase what we're going to be doing um, with layers uh, and or sorry not layers rather layer masks in um, Photoshop right now. So um, let's actually hide this and. Um, first of all, uh, I'm going to show you guys the wrong way of doing this first by not using layer masks um, the, and why it's like negative to do that and the positives of using layer masks. So um, I'll, I'll be talking about that now. Um, so first of all, uh, let's create a new layer as usual. Um, we have a new layer here and again this this image is included in the resource package that is included as a link down below in the description so um, if you want to edit this exact same photo but you can really do this to anything I'm just using this as an example so um, now we go to the brush tool and we're just gonna make a bunch of scribbles here so until we have something um, this like a desirable design I think that looks pretty cool so from here what we could do without layer masks is just go to the eraser tool to sort of get that effect I just showed you guys and uh, try to cut out the car and get the car cut out from the scribbles so um, once we've done that as you guys can see that looks pretty cool but let's say we wanted to recover a part of the scribble and actually fill it back in. Now what we have to, what we would have to do um, by using just the eraser tool and not using layer masks is we would have to go edit, undo, eraser until let's say we want this part filled back in. We'd have to go step backward and then actually revert it to the original um, where we'd lose all the progress everywhere else and actually have to redo it so we'd have to get it how we want there. Now, um, using layer masks, um, we can avoid this problem. Um, so let's actually just delete this layer and create a new one. So let's just uh, create a new layer and actually start making the paint brushes again, uh, the scribbles or whatever you want to call it. So let's just do that. That looks pretty cool. 
Um, all right, maybe even do like little smaller brush strokes to add to it, make it um, more detailed. All right, that's pretty cool. Now from here, um, again, or not again, actually, we're not gonna use the eraser tool this time. Uh, what we are gonna do is click or click on here, click here. And um, this is what this is gonna do is add a layer mask. Oops, I accidentally added two. Let's actually just add one. So um, we click here and um, what that does is add a layer mask. So if we wanted to erase some of the white bits to cut out the car, we go here and um, this is basically switching between alpha and non-alpha channels. Alpha channels meaning transparent. So when it's on black, black always means that it's gonna be transparent. That's what it's gonna, that's what is erasing basically. So when it's on black, uh, we can click this little arrow thing to switch between the two. So when it's on black, basically what we're doing is erasing. So uh, let's just erase the cut out the car. So do like a quick job to race because I'm going to show you guys how to fill stuff back in using the uh, the channels. So um, let's say that looks pretty good. All right. Now let's say we wanted to fill some parts in back here. We, you, you can't really do that just using the eraser tool, anything without alpha channels. But ni the nice thing with alpha channels here is if we switch back to the, um, to the white, um, we can fill stuff back in. Um, just like that. And again, let's say we mess up there, we can switch back to the alpha channel and also erase that. So again, this is a very non-destructive way of doing things in Photoshop. And once you get the hang of alpha channels, there's so much things you can do with it. And it, this is just the concept of it. And um, it's just a very important way to, uh, to manage your work in Photoshop. And I thought I, it would be really important to show you guys in this, um, in this tutorial. Um, using alpha channels. So the rest of the image, all I did was essentially just add different colors. I can sh I'll show you guys how to actually change the colors of the brush. Oh, first of all, before we do that, if you guys want to see the actual channel itself, um, you can hold down Alt and then click on that, and that'll actually show the um, uh, the the channel itself. This is the black is always the transparent, as I said before and the white is the non-transparent. See, like, I didn't even notice there was a um, non-transparent part here actually covering the car until I went to here because there's glare on the on the car itself. So this is actually a very important thing for when you're doing your edits, as you can see there, just one thing I, I just noticed from just switching be um, between those two different views. So we can actually cover that area by um, going, or we're already on the alpha channel and just uh, racing there. So um, yeah, now let's say we want to change the color of the brush. We click on uh, this, not the alpha channel itself, but actually the brush. And we go to um, image adjustments, and then we can go to uh, color, or let's just go to uh, hue and saturation. And we click on colorize and we can, let's put down the lightness a bit so we can see the color and we can change the hue from here. So what I did was I got, I went to like a little uh, kind of bluish tint and I, bumped up saturation and um, yeah, that's sort of like the effect I got. And um, by doing so, I also added different brush strokes and whatnot and added the text, this this text sort of um, design I showed you guys how to do in like this basics tutorial, quite simple, just using the effects panel and whatnot. So um, yeah, that's just the very basics of using, uh, of using layer masks in Photoshop. And I might dive deeper into using layer masks later on in uh, part three of uh, this tutorial series. All right, so now we're gonna be covering the very basics of lighting. Now, I'm not gonna to go too, too in depth in lighting because I can make a whole video in itself about lighting, creating an atmosphere, you know, um, trying to achieve uh, realistic lighting, uh, light rays, light beams, um, stuff like that. You know, I can uh, I can really create a, uh, a lengthy tutorial in itself about lighting. And if you guys want me to do that, I would be more than happy to, please let me know. Um, but I'm just gonna give you guys the very basics of lighting, how you guys can achieve uh, simple um, light rays um, and uh, lens flares, stuff like that. And um, yeah, uh, ambient lighting, like soft lighting, stuff like that. And we're actually um, also going to be using this image to, to do all the, uh, the edits and the testing and whatnot and uh, showing you guys the examples of uh, what type of lighting we're going to be doing today. So um, we're going to get started by making a sort of soft, uh, soft lighting um, from uh, this right corner here, because uh, as you guys can see, this uh, this image is already edited a bit um, with the color correction and whatnot, and there is soft lighting here, but we're gonna add to that and make this a little brighter, and we can actually add colors to it. Um, so, well, first, uh, the first method of adding lighting um, we're gonna actually use um, is actually using the brush tool. 
uh, weirdly enough. Uh, we're going to go to the brush tool again, as we already went over in this tutorial. So um, go to the brush tool and actually select the first brush and hardness all the way down to zero. We want to bump up the size to uh, something like around 500. Um, that should be good. And we're just going to start painting here. Actually, um, before we do that, let's create a new layer. Um, forgot to do that. That's very important, of course. So on this new layer, let's start painting um, and making the sort of uh, the sort of like it's not really a ray in this case. It's sort of like a soft ambient uh, light that's just going to be uh, seeping through from this corner. So um, as you guys can see there right now, what it is is basically just this crazy light that's just overpowering the car. We can't really see the end of the car there. And what we're going to do uh, with this is um, uh, mess around with the effects panel and actually um, edit the light uh, using that. Um, it's not much of a light uh, as of right now, but um, let's say we uh, reduce the opacity. You can start to see where this is going. Now this is without any opacity, so this is the original image. When we bump that a bit up, like even like the slightest amount, you could start to see um, where we can take this uh, very simple effect uh, we just did here. So let's say we go like around 20% opacity, we can do a color overlay. And then when we do color overlay, we can actually also edit the uh, color itself, maybe go for like an orangish hue. And as you guys can see that um, that adds a pretty, uh, pretty nice uh, effect to that. Can even uh, just experiment with the colors you know even if we go with a blue and then do the same effects we did with the brush strokes that we did before um, you can achieve something uh, pretty pretty nice with this so uh, we can also mess around with opacity now if you're doing this you don't want to go too high opacity because that looks pretty weird now as you guys can see so if we if we go down to opacity like around um, I don't know like 30 um, from I'd say 15 to 30 percent it should be good and another method we could use is use uh, uh, the gradient overlay. And with this, we, uh, we could go with uh, this over here. And as you guys can see, this adds a nice orangish uh, tint. And what we can do is at the extreme end to the left here, we uh, double click that and we add a white to that. So basically what this is, it's, a, it's an orange that progressively turns into like a, a lighter hue of orange like and then into like a yellow that eventually fades into white. So that is pretty cool. And when we press OK, what we can do is also edit the angle. So we'd have it angled down here where the white would be here and then um, goes uh, darker as it goes up. And we can also now um, go back to the blending options, make the color, um, make it a uh, uh, the opacity higher and as you guys can see when we go obviously too high it's not going to look too good but if we go something like that and then what we can do is actually move it so we can have it um, something like here as you guys can see that that's a pretty um pretty cool effect uh, we achieved from just simply using the brush tool a lot of people don't really actually use this but I tend to yeah, really use this in like thumbnails and stuff see as you guys can see um uh, that's a pretty cool effect now this is more for like a graphic effect, um, uh, more so than uh, actually creating realistic uh, lighting. Um, that's why I mentioned thumbnails because I always like to do gradients and whatnot in thumbnails and like headers, stuff like that, banners. This is a very nice effect to, to add and it does add the sense of lighting but not necessarily um, the traditional type of lighting if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, this is uh, the first method I was going to show you guys uh, how to do lighting. Um, a very simple one. Now we're also gonna, I'm also gonna show you guys how to use images uh, you can find from the internet. And I also included um, a couple uh, lens flares and different uh, lighting you can use inside of your projects uh, in, in the resource package that I included uh, down below. And um, I'm still actually creating that right now, but by the time this uh, video is complete, um, the the package will be complete. So far I only have one light ray, but of course there will be a couple more for you guys available. And so let's say, um, let's say you wanted to, uh, first of all, I'll show you guys how to, uh, how to take an image from the internet, a lens flare, let's say, and um, put it into your project. And then I'll show you guys how to use a lens flare that is included inside or a lighting, um, uh, lighting preset um, that is included inside of my package for you guys. But first of all, uh, let's go on Google and actually search for a uh, lens flare or um, a light ray. So as you guys can see here, if we just search up light ray on Google Images, uh, we have a lot of results. Uh, and let's say we wanted to use one of these uh, light rays um, into our actual project. Um, let's let's find something pretty cool. Uh, that looks nice. That does not look too bad. 
Um, that looks pretty cool. See, this is a lens flare. Now, if you wanted to add this into our project somewhere, let's say you wanted to add a flare on the top of the car here, um, how do we start doing that? Now, um, first of all, let's go to view image, uh, right click on it, save image as, and then um, let's say save it as a flare. And um, now we go back to the project, we go file, um, place, and then find the file we just uh, we just downloaded, and there we go. Um, now we have a huge blown up uh, version of this. Uh, let's actually uh, size it down a bit, go to one corner, hold down shift, and size it down. That looks about right. Now, um, once we're done sizing it, we can press the check mark um, once we're happy with the size and whatnot. And uh, from here, we can go to FX and then go to the effects panel when we're, uh, and then go to blending options. And once we're in blending options from here, we can actually go to uh, the blend mode and go down to screen. Usually screen would do the job. And as you guys can see here, what it did is it cut out like the black background and it blended it into the background where um, it was only the, it's only the lens flare that actually shows the, the black in the background um, is cut out essentially. So from here, as you guys can see, you can sort of see there's a difference here. There's a roughness where it's not really blended in correctly there. Um, and uh, it's basically just because it's a cut from there. It's like a cutout. It doesn't fully blend in the actual picture. So what we can do is go to the racer tool and go on the image itself, click on it, rasterize it, and start blending it in from there. And as you can see that, it looks a lot, a lot better now. So now once we have the lens flare in there, we can place it wherever we want. Let's say we want to place it right there that looks pretty cool so um yeah that's just basically that's the basics of just adding um a lens flare from the internet or any picture an image that is a flare with a black background into your project and that is a very uh, effective way to to use lighting in photoshop and um, blend images and whatnot and let's say you wanted to use one of the light rays included in the project i in the um the resource file, uh, rather, that I include for you guys in the description down below. Um, so far, there's only one light ray because, as I said, I will be completing it and there will be a, a bunch more um, once the video's up. Right now, I just uh, have one just to show you guys this. So let's say you want this in the project. You right-click on this. Um, this is actually uh, just uh, that light ray, as you guys can see there. So let's say we right-click on that. We would um, duplicate... Um, sorry duplicate layer and then go to uh, the project um, so right now we only have the that other project that one other project it would just show the two other documents um, in this right now it's the current one which is untitled 2 and the other one which is the Porsche 918 and just duplicate it as light ray or whatever you want you can rename it and now it is in the project as you guys can see here so the light ray um, we can also resize this let's go control T and uh, we can press shift on that and uh, resize it however you want. And as you guys can see there, that's a pretty nice effect to add into your, uh, to add into your project. And that is literally just an image that uh, is using a uh, blend, a blend mode inside of uh, Photoshop. So that is the very basics of lighting. I will also, I could also show you guys the, like the manual way of doing lighting, the realistic lighting, like really um, in-depth lighting. I can uh, make a whole separate tutorial and please let me know if you want to see that because I will be uh, more than happy to do that. But um, yeah, that is it for lighting. All right, so the last thing we're going to be looking at in this tutorial is going to be filters. Now, filters are usually something that is added towards the end of um, a project of of whatever a sort, where it's it's sort of like an effect that you want to achieve from color grading um, to lighting effects, which actually ties into the lighting that uh, we just did. There's different ways to actually achieve uh, lighting effects using filters, and I'm actually going to show you guys that. So it sort of ties in with lighting. And also, um, yeah, there's just a lot of effects that you guys can use, and it's very straightforward. It's really um, not much. It's uh, not much to, to teach. I'm just going to show you guys um, some of the filters I really like uh, like to use so uh, we're also gonna just keep on using this image and um, uh, I just find this image is perfect for uh, the types of uh, the things that we're experimenting with because the colors everything like the background the blur everything so um, we're just gonna keep on using this and uh, we're just gonna ignore all the other layers that we worked with you guys can delete it or keep it it's up to you um, I'm just going to click on the actual layer itself, the raw image. That's why I said usually this is done towards the end of a project when you would combine, merge all the layers into one image and then edit the image um, with the filters in, in the end. So uh, first of all, um, 
uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple of uh, filters. Uh, one I actually really uh, like to use uh, sometimes. Like it really matters on what you want to do. Um, the oil paint uh, filter is a very interesting one. It uh, makes your image look literally like an oil painting. Um, so this is a very abstract one. No matters what you're trying to achieve. You can, uh, of course, uh, mess with the settings here. Like if you make the scale all the way up, um, it makes it uh, less detailed. And then if you bring it down, there's a little more detail. And uh, the bristle detail, that of course, this is the main thing with the detail. If you bring it all the way down, that um, adds a little less sharpness, um, essentially. Put the bristle detail, oh, actually, other way around. Bristle detail um, down. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I meant. If you put the bristle, bristle detail down, you have uh, less... Uh, sharpness and if you put it up there's more roughness to it um and with the stylization that uh that more detailing stuff um basically so th it's a very interesting filter i sometimes like to use it mattering on what i'm doing um now what else is there we can also do there's different types of blurs you can do there's a uh, um, gaussian blur which is probably the most commonly used blur mattering on uh, what you're doing Let, let's say you're blurring something out adding text over it that really works well and um, you can also add, like, uh, let's say, a, a motion blur, uh, which is essentially the, the blur that is in the background of this, of this car. So basically how this image was done, it was taken, um, the, the, the original image did not, I'm pretty sure, did not have a background blur here. It was just a still normal image of this car. And um, you can basically do this using the, uh, the, the masks that I showed you guys, uh, for example, today. Just cut out the car and then make the, uh, the car and the background a different image. And then what, what was done was uh, a filter was used, like the motion blur filter. Um, where the background is motion blurred and the car is in focus. So you can, of course, mess around with this with any any type of project. Um, there's a lot of uh, blurs that you can uh, use. And uh, there's also distortions, um, like uh, different um, displacement and stuff like that, uh, like ripple distortion, for example. If we uh, put that up, that looks pretty cool. That looks like uh, it's underwater or something like that. Um, and what else can we do? Uh, let's see. There's also sharpen. So, for example, if you have a uh, an image you want to sharpen, um, you can always uh, sharpen that. This is a quite sharp image uh, in itself, but like it, you can still see if we add a sharpen filter, it actually makes it uh, that much sharper. It looks uh, pretty nice now. So let's also add. Uh, there's different stylized um, effects like uh, uh, find edges, which is interesting, um, and there's also. Diffuse, Emboss, Extrude is uh, pretty cool. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting effects, um, basically. It's just uh, up to you to experiment with them and see what fits uh, best with your project. And um, I'm going to show you guys, uh, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to do uh, the lighting effects. So uh, let's say you want to do uh, lighting effects using filters. Go to Render and then Lighting Effects. And from here, you can um, kind of do like a focus. Let's say you wanted a focal point on the car itself and everything else sort of blacked out. Um, you can, uh, let's decrease the hotspot a bit. So here we can actually make the background sort of blacked out. Um, and then we can focus on, let's say, the, uh, the front of the car here. Um, and then we can uh, put the colorize up to make the, uh, the um, exposure a bit higher. The, um, gloss that you can really experiment with this metallic put that up and down metallic all the way up for me it looks best ambience that also is sort of like exposure let's put that down and as you guys can see once you press ok we have some pretty cool lighting effects going on here all right so that is going to conclude part two of learning the basics of photoshop we covered many things today in which i really feel will help you guys get the hang of the software and all its amazing capabilities now if you made it all the way through the end Firstly, I hope this really helped you out, and if so, I'd really appreciate a like on the video, and let me know what you guys are looking forward to see in the next video in this series, if you have a specific request for topics to cover. With all that being said, this is where I sign out, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one.